Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to save time by building custom templates in Reaper. Ain't nobody got time for that. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Taylor and I do all sorts of guitar related stuff like this on my channel. If that's something you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my uploads. What we're gonna be doing today is setting up a project template in Reaper. Now the purpose of this project template is that you have something that you can load up and start working with right away. So that way, when inspiration strikes, you can start tracking your idea immediately without having to waste a bunch of time setting up your project. Now I'm gonna be doing this in Reaper because it's a very inexpensive program and while you can do very similar things in other digital audio workstations, I wanted to make something for the bedroom producer or guitar player that is on a budget and doesn't really know where to start and that they could basically just load up and just start tracking their ideas. And by the way, the template that we build today will be available for free via a link in the description below. So in this video, we're gonna set up a template in Reaper. I'm gonna be using stock plugins from Reaper or free plugins. Links to the free plugins will be in the description below. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, obviously, is open Reaper. My Reaper might look a little bit different than yours. I'm using a skin that makes it look like Pro Tools. These skins can be found in the Reaper forums, and if you search for a Reaper Pro Tools skin, I'm sure you can find something similar to this. But this template will work in any version of Reaper, no matter what skin you're using. So the first thing we're gonna do here is set up one track, and we're gonna call this track Drums. And the drums, I'm gonna insert a VST. And the drum set I'm gonna use is called MT Power Kit. It is a free VST. And it, there's a disclaimer right here. Yes, it is free, but developing this plugger required a lot of work and dedication. So if you want to, you can donate to them and get a registration key, which will bypass this whole load up screen. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You just have to press skip every time. Okay, so here's the MT Power Drum Kit 2. And you can route this out to other channels if you want to, if you want to get a little bit more complex drum mix. We will be doing that. We'll come back to that later though. Now we're gonna do guitar. So we got guitar left and guitar right. We're gonna add in bass. And we're actually gonna add in two tracks underneath this. And we will make those child tracks of this parent track. And again, we'll come back to all of this in a minute here. Okay, so now that I have these tracks set up, I'm gonna start pulling in audio, so that way we can start getting like a basic mix going on. And then once we have a basic mix, we'll focus on the master bus, we'll get a master chain set up, and then we'll save our template and we'll be done. We're gonna be using the audio from the budget modeler shootout that I just did on my channel. And if you didn't see that, I will link that up here for you. We're just throwing a little bit of compression on the snare and the bass drum. Might as well do it on these toms as well. And if I was mixing like an album or something like that, I would spend way more times and I definitely wouldn't be using the MT Power Drum Kit too. But this is just a tool for writing songs and this is the same way I do all of the demos on my channel. And the only reason that I'm able to do so many of those demos and write so many songs is because I have templates like this set up so I'm not wasting time setting this stuff up every time I want to create a demo. Okay, so we have the MIDI in here now. It's not the best sounding thing in the world, but it will do. All right, sounds awesome, we're all done. Just kidding. Now for the guitars, we're gonna use the Amped Roots plugin and you can swap this out for any plugin you want. Again, I just wanted to create a template that like a beginner could get started with for absolutely free and still get a pretty good mix. We're gonna dial this in here. Sounds better already. Okay, now over here on the bass, we're gonna use the BOD TSE plugin. Again, this is another free plugin, and this is actually my preferred bass plugin regardless of it being free. It's just really easy to use. You can dial it in in a few seconds. See, look how easy that was. And it just gives you a really awesome bass sound with really, really minimal effort, which is always much appreciated, especially if you're like me and you don't like wasting time and you just wanna get some music made. Okay, it's starting to sound uh, something like a song here. Okay, we're gonna add in one more track here and we're gonna call this bass drum. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the MT Power Drum Kit 2. We're gonna open up the send in the mixer and send the bass drum to output number three. Then we're gonna grab the send receive button here on the drum track and we're gonna drag that and drop it into the bass drum track. 
Then it'll bring up this dialog here, and what you want to do is you want to tell it that you're taking a new mono source, mono source number three. So that's going to take the bass drum that we just sent to channel number three on the drums track and send it to the main audio track for the new bass drum track. Okay, so now we have the bass drum isolated being sent to the bass drum track. That will come into play later. Uh, another thing that I want to add in here that I like adding when I'm using MIDI drums, it's a pretty cool stock plugin. It's called MIDI Velocity and Timing Humanizer. You're going to want to put that before your VST instrument or it won't work. And then you have various parameters here that you can control. Basically, the way that I set this up is to kind of emulate more of like what I see when I record a real drummer. So the timing humanization level, we're gonna turn that up quite a bit. And the bias for the timing, we're gonna set that slightly fast because drummers tend to rush rather than fall behind the beat in my experience at least. And then uh, the velocity humanization level, we'll turn that up a little bit here. And then when we play it back, you can actually see how much it's affecting each one of those parameters in real time. It's a very small change, but when you're using MIDI drums, it really does help out a little bit and make them sound not so unnatural. Now we have all this set up. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into our bass. We'll go into the high first, and we're going to add the re-EQ plugin. And all we're gonna do here is cut the low end right around 450 hertz, and then we're gonna go into the low end and we're gonna do the same thing, but opposite. And we're gonna cut the high end out and we're gonna cut that down to about, let's call it two, let's call it like 350. Maybe even a little bit lower. We'll go 250 on that one. And let's go back up to the high. We'll set that down to 350. And so now when we play both of them back, we have the high end of the bass on one track and the low end of the bass on another track. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the bass drum here, and we're gonna drag the send receive from the bass drum down to the low track. And this time we're going to tell Reaper that we wanna take the audio one and two from the bass drum track and receive it as audio number three on the bass low track. A little weird, right? Yeah, we're getting to it. Okay, so we're gonna use Recomp for this, and I just loaded up Recomp here, and basically what I told it is I want it to be auxiliary input left, which is going to be channel number three. If you go in here to your plug and pin connector, you can see that channel three is auxiliary input left. We're side chaining the bass drum from the MIDI drums, which is why we separated it out onto the separate bass drum track here. Now you don't necessarily have to do this. You could take it straight from the drum track. I just like having it on an additional track in case we want to throw in any effects or anything like that. It's just already set up and ready to go. We're side chaining the bass drum from this bass drum track here that we already isolated from our MIDI drums onto the low track. And we're telling it that any time that the bass drum plays, which is, this is what the compressor is hearing. We're gonna put it about six ratio. Uh, that's okay, a knee size right there. So it's reducing by about three decibels. And I also set up a high pass and a low pass, so it's only compressing everything from 46 hertz to about 124 hertz. And it's a very subtle difference, but this really helps hold the low end together in a mix. And although I have never done this with free plugins, it seems to be working okay. Uh, now let's listen back to the whole thing. Okay. So everything is sitting together quite a bit better. I'm gonna go into these inserts here and uh, I just wanna turn the compression on just a hair on these cymbals. They just sound a little bit weak. Okay, so now that we have this basic template set up that you could open up and start tracking with, uh, there's one last thing I wanna do here. I wanna open the master bus and I wanna add a limiter and we're gonna use this Event Horizon limiter clipper here because it's free and it comes with Reaper. Uh, another thing that I wanna add in here is another instance of Recomp. And then we're gonna add an instance of this JS saturation as well. We're gonna try it. It says loser. Hmm, maybe it's a loser. And the way that I'm gonna set this up here is I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put my Recomp first. And we don't want a lot of ratio, we just want to set that at about four to one.
and we're gonna set the actually we're gonna set the attack to 10 milliseconds and we're gonna set the release to to one millisecond. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna adjust my threshold until this is getting about four dB of reduction. And you can hear all that compressor is doing really is just gently pushing down the top end and really tying everything together. It's sort of gluing the mix together a little bit. And it's surprisingly doing a really good job for a included plugin. Okay, uh, we're gonna mess with this JS saturation and if this doesn't work, we're just gonna ditch it. But, oh, that's nice actually. And what the saturation is doing is it's just sort of emulating some tube saturation, kind of like bringing things out and just making things sound a little bit more um, present and pulled forward in the mix. Okay, next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to use this limiter clipper. Now you can play around with this for yourself, but I like to go negative 0.3. Um, that's just kind of like what I was taught. Now what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm just gonna be adjusting this threshold meter. Um, since I can't see how much it's actually reducing with this plugin, I'm just gonna have to do it by ear, but normally what I would do is I would try to keep it around three dB of reduction, uh, definitely never more than six, but um, we're just gonna do it by ear and hopefully we get somewhere in the ballpark. Okay, I can still see these meters here bouncing a little bit, so I know I'm not absolutely smashing it at four, but you notice that if I go below negative four, it starts to just get really distorted. And um, even though it might get a little bit louder, uh, I'm introducing a lot of clipping and distortion there, but I think that sounds pretty good. Let's listen to it with the mastering chain on and off. <laughs> Okay, to be honest with you, I'm really surprised I was able to get it to sound like this uh, using mostly included plugins with Reaper and a couple free amp sims. Uh, so now what we wanna do here is we wanna just go ahead and delete all of this audio. Uh, I'm gonna reset this to four, four for you guys and something a little bit more reasonable. We'll go 165 beats per minute. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to File, Project Templates. And then I'm gonna save this project as a template. We're gonna call this Taylor's free YouTube template. And now to load this template, all you have to do is go to File, Project Templates, and select Taylor's free YouTube template. And that's it, with a few clicks of a button, you've saved yourself all the time of setting up this project in sort of like this demo mix mode that I do. Again, this template's available via a link in the description below, so make sure to check that out and let me know what you think of it. Also, make sure that if you're going to use this template that you download the MT drum kit as well as the Amped Roots and the BOD TSE plugins. They're all free, but they need to be installed on your computer before this template will load correctly. Also, I am on the newest version of Reaper at the time of filming this, which is version 6.1. Three, so that might matter if you're using an older version of Reaper. If you're using a newer one, I imagine that this template would work just fine. But uh, yeah, make sure your Reaper's updated. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. What do you guys think about templates? Do you use templates in your workflow? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are the best. If you are interested in joining my Patreon account, there's a link for that in the description below as well. And if you liked this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.